All right, welcome back. We are on episode two here, The Baker's Dozen. I hope we didn't scare too many people off from the first time we went through. Um, I am Drew NG. I am joined here with my lovely friend Dan, aka Young Donut. That's me. So that's all right. We we made it through a week. <laughs> we haven't gone in flames. We haven't been taken down. So we. Obviously, you're doing something okay. No copy. Or they haven't found it yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the view counting on everything, you know. I mean, I think we're doing good. No no copyright strikes, no angry comments. We did have a disgruntled Josh who wanted yeah, to. Yeah. We, we, we <laughs> he messaged you too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he made sure to, to let us both. I mean, this He's, is involving He sent the you. record straight. If you want to be the this, one that. Yeah. This is this is fair. I incorrectly stated that Josh lost to my Bowser in a Calios match. He did not lose to my Bowser. We never had that match. But I mean the Ness the Ness showed him what's up. He he caught these gloves with my Luigi. But, <laughs> these gloves. but the Bowser Calio match didn't happen. It was, it was I, a I made a I made a smasher. Luigi combo video called Catch These Gloves during quarantine. Wait, is that on YouTube and I didn't Yeah, know that? dude, it's it's good. Yeah, oh, I I catch. played like nothing but Luigi for like two three weeks. Got some actually really good clips, and some of it's just like a whole bunch of meme. It's to the Spider Man oh, like my pizza God. theme. <laughs> I yeah, see it. I see it. It's oh, it's God. good. Catch these gloves. Can we talk about how the the very second result? If you go to YouTube and you type in Drew Ng catch these gloves, the second result is Drake is it drawing gloves. No, it's oh. Drake. It's Drake's song <laughs> headlines with two hundred and thirty one million views that he put out nine years ago. Wow. Why in the fuck? Anyway, uh, usually yeah. usually you'll get like drawing. I'll see videos yeah. for like drawing guides when I look it up. It's like a, somehow <laughs> that's draw. what gets correcting to. Yeah. How to draw gloves for cartoonists. Definitely yeah. a, a fun time there. So, I mean, in the meantime, what have you been up to? How's your how's your past week been? Anything eventful? Exciting? Not really. Just been just been kind of going along. Um, I'm trying to think of what I did like playing games wise. I just played a lot of old school RuneScape. For those that don't know, this guy is a an OSRS grinder. He, I've been this is, I've been playing too much, but you that's can, okay. <laughs> eventually, that's okay. eventually, when we release the Baker's Dozen Discord, he can post all of his oh. high tier memes that he's been. Oh, I've made making. those. Those are good. I like learned how to do video editing from making like shit post um old school RuneScape memes. Like I've gotten way better with my video editing from it, and it's just like. It's like it's like legit content for like eight people, and that's it. Because the only one people, the the only ones who get the jokes. Eventually, it's gonna be millions, darling. We got the millions. They'll be coming in. They'll want to see all the memes. It's great. It's great. But I mean, at the end of the day, it's all gaming. So I mean, even it's grinding, grinding RuneScape. I recently found like another money making scheme with a friend of mine. I don't know if it's something that we should outwardly talk Your about. Because what? You say you don't want to I don't, I don't know it, if What's I it kind be... of about? I'll, I'll let you know if it's I'm It's an alchemy. It. It's just a it's a it's an alchemy thing. So it's like a high alk uh usage on something that's cheap right now or at least cheaper uh, than the high alk okay. price. So there's something that we're using and uh just yeah. grinding that out. So I found this method that doesn't require like an auto clicker. It doesn't require any like additional third party sources cuz you know as well as anyone that probably plays old school RuneScape when you're doing high alchemy if you're trying to grind something out and you just have to keep clicking, keep clicking, go back and forth between the two things, if you take out the shit ton of them, you line it up right with where the High Alchemy logo is and you just spam click, you know, you got a good lineup going, it'll it'll do it quickly. I'm sure you I'm sure you know that you ready? one. Ready? This is this is the sweaty term. You ready? You ever heard of Alkgility? Alkgility. <laughs> No. You do your agility courses as you're going. You do the alk between clicking on the the obstacles. That's that's never. when you when you talk about high alk. I'm like, oh man, I'm gonna have to do that. I just started like a different account, and I'm like, yeah, I gotta do alk agility soon. I have yeah. no idea what that yeah, is. I'm like, still so I've, far down. I, I'm joined. I joined into a group, and just like we're just like super super sweaty. I mean, shit. If I but if it's I it's knew, fun. Yeah. It's fun. I mean, I would be like, that's where it's probably most fun. In my eyes, it's more fun the harder yeah. you can try it something and just find fun within it. Yeah. But uh, I found I found the super sweaty high alk uh, uh, legal, go. legal 
uh, click bot. So when you have a, a wired mouse or a wireless mouse, there's a sensor on the bottom of your mouse, as many people are aware. If you're just spam clicking away, if you have a tremor like me, it, your mouse might move and it might go off the, the area and you're going to have to recenter it and you're going to have to focus on it. Cover the sensor. You want, you want something that's going to change your life? I take here's a your... sticky note. Oh. And I here's just your... put it on it. What, did you, what do here's you got? Your, here's your old school RuneScape life hack for the day. What do you got? Um, there's a way you can like set up a virtual keyboard or something and you can so, just set yeah. numpad five know, to just click and you just tap num five forever. So my like keyboard, my keyboard oh. does not have a number pad. It does not yeah. have one on it. So I use I it for, do I use it for too many things outside of gaming to get like a small mechanical keyboard. Yeah. So instead I just cover the sensor and I can just click all day or Part two that I recently found out, and this is good for people that aren't even at their computers. You're still in your home, but you're not at your computer. You download the uh, Google Chrome Remote Desktop app, and you zoom in on the pixel. So you, you connect to your computer, you uh, zoom in on the pixel where it doesn't move, and just tap your phone screen. The whole fucking screen. You turn on track pack, uh, trackpad mode. You just tap the screen. Mm. Easy. Okay. Easy. Easy. Hi. I'm. I'm working. I'm just. Just tapping away, and I'm just fucking making nine thousand whatever a fucking second. It's gravy. It's gravy. Nice. That was like a half leak because I think that's how much. Anyway, so uh, I get you. Old school RuneScape's lit. Uh, I would actually love to eventually learn more about that game. Uh, I know there's the the what is it called the like group iron mans now that are going on that yep. are fucking sick i got a i got a group i got a hardcore group that's so hardcore, sick yeah i'm yeah. sure we could even we'll probably get into a some sort of episode talking i'd be down about just other games and i'm sure if we're just talking branching away from like multiplayer competitive games i'm sure oh, i could spend like a Days. lot of time talking about it. i'm sure we're gonna get there oh 100 percent yeah 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 um i guess personal wise i I know I've just been kind of working, doing my own regular thing. Um, I hosted a, a, a one-off tournament for some friends in the, the oh, Melee yeah. Hell group for people that are a part of that uh, and ended up winning that. That was really funny. Um, and yeah. then I actually, funny enough, you entered, want... entered my first legit tournament at least oh, yeah? in a while. I entered a, a Friday night Melee. Uh, oh, nice. The East Coast Fridays. Yeah, East Coast Fridays. And nice. uh, I didn't I didn't do great. I, I got fifth. So I mean, That's I'll good. coming back into it, you know, and I there went, I went majority Falcon because I think I think yeah. I really want to just hone my roots with him. But uh, I I lost to Poppy, and uh, shoot, what was the other guy's name? I actually have no fucking idea. A chic player, really really solid chic, I would say. Um, definitely tilted mm. the ever loving hell out of me, um, as chic do. But, I uh, like those East Coast Friday tournaments. It was fun. It was fun. A lot of really nice people that were hanging out in there. Um, yeah. I think I, here's his name. It was Pallet. Pallet. Okay. Uh, he's cool. he plays like so many characters. He won Falcon or yeah, he won Falcon Peach and Sheik that tournament. Uh, yeah, I cool did. Traits. Yeah, I did a little Falco. I did my Captain Falcon, and then I did one Ganon Ditto to oh, to no. qualify me for for their top eight, and uh, actually that won was... that. Were you, well, I'm not going to side tangent on this that much. Were you That's there, okay. were you in the Fredonia melee scene when I was switching characters against every person I played? So here's the thing. I was a part it was of like, it. It was like a month I did that. Yeah. I was a part of it during that time, but I didn't know like when you were doing it because ultimately I think I would pay attention to the matches and the majority of the time I thought you were just going peach. And I, was I going knew peach. that. I was you did going Peach, Fox. Sheik, Fox. Uh, I was playing Falcon versus TGB. I was playing did Falcon you really? versus Luigi. Yeah. I don't remember that at yeah. all. I went all of them. I went all of the top tiers besides like Marth and Puff, which is funny because Marth's probably like. He's one of your best. He's one of your yeah. best. Absolutely. Yeah. That, that's wild. That's absolutely wild. Yeah. So, I mean, for, yeah. for a tournament, I had fun. I definitely, uh, depending on how I have to sneeze, I think. Wait. Yes. Maybe you no oh the bait oh that Ooh. sucks oh i hate that so much um yeah fuck okay, what am i saying yeah so depending on how things go may actually start trying to compete a little things? bit That's more sick. but yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll see how yeah. it goes i gotta actually I, dedicate more time into actual practice yeah. but yeah those east coast com those east coast friday 
tournaments were fun. I actually commentated a couple of those. Did you? Did you? I did actually you? did. Yeah. I'm not even just saying this for a good segue, but I, was I actually to, did comment. I was actually about to say that's like a perfect <laughs> segue into this because today's primary topic of conversation that I know we want to It's not old school RuneScape. It's not. It's actually new school. Uh, it's RuneScape 7. Oh, so God, we're no. going to cover a lot of that. No, we were going to talk about commentary today. Uh, and just a lot about it that we both uh, recognize and have appreciated within um, just having done it for so long and just a lot of different concerns within that. Um, first of which being, I know we both come from like uh, the same background when it came to like original commentary. But beyond that, I mean, have you ever done any other gigs for, for commentary like besides Smash related or? Um, no, not st- really. No. Um, I... Even things that I like got into more seriously, Rocket League. There's mm-hmm. not really tournaments like that available. I actually there was one tournament at my grad school. Mm-hmm. I went there because they went to like Smash Club. They were having like melee tournament, and it's like a small scene. But I went and like yeah, we're having a Rocket League tournament. Mm-hmm. And what it was, it was on an Xbox split on one screen one v ones <laughs> on like Xbox controllers. Top tier competitive game, which play. is like yeah. But I got like a Taco Bell gift card from winning that thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah it was weird. You get but, free diarrhea for winning. How yeah. sick! But but there was no there's no real like commentary. And well, we're they're what they're one of the sort of esports. I'm definitely going to talk a lot about with mm-hmm. their commentary because that's one of the other sort of esports things that I've kind of been able to get into and look into. Absolutely. Yeah. Have yeah, you yeah. done other things? I have actually. I've commentated uh speedrunning tournaments before. Oh I did, uh, back when I was way more active in Undertale speedrunning, I commentated that. Um and it was a lot of fun. I think um uh, at least something that we could tie a little bit into um as far as like different communities and things like that would go. Like speedrunning a uh a speed run or wait, did I say speed running a speed run? Yes, yeah, Comment- streaming. <laughs> Sure. Commentating and streaming like uh, speed running events is is so different because like mm-hmm. you watch you watch like a smash tournament and you're just focusing on the one game that's happening. Granted, there might be you know there's two different characters doing two different things, whatever the case is, whatever. Um, it's still just yeah. two very different things. And when you're watching a speed run, especially one that could have people milliseconds from from one another if not seconds from one another and they're about to perform maybe the same trick or the same style of trick and and one of them messes up by just a little but the other landed it and it's like you want to try and address multiple things at once that's why um not to go off on too much of a tangent but like you know fuzziness right yes probably one of the best def uh one of the best defined speed run commentators out there because he knows when to talk about what he's gonna address he has so much knowledge on so many different games he's truly like in terms of speed running commentary he's one of the people like i respect wow that's crazy he's he's really really talented but as far as from what i've recognized from from like speed running in different communities when i did undertale speed running it was just a lot a lot to have to deal with and it felt very similar to like doubles like trying to commentate doubles gameplay oh okay but uh yeah i would i would definitely say that's that's been the extent of mine i i've i've also commentated my own uh if i don't know if you remember this but uh super or what was it uh oh my god i feel like an extra life no, no. Well, I guess Extra Life too, but uh, Super Smash Showdown, Super Smash Showdown, the Fortnite event that I ran. Oh Kill yeah, I, I remember that. that. Yeah, I I I, mean, I, I, I competed in that. Do you remember were that? You in that? I don't remember if you were in that. Yeah, I think so. Or you ran something that I hosted. Maybe not the that one, I but me know. and Bub entered. Maybe it was that one then, because and we randomly did well. Not because of me, but because of Bob. <laughs> but like, Bob no, there was, was someone that there him. was someone that we were against that was like, they were way better than us, and they mm-hmm. had two really bad games, and I think we won like six to four, That's or something. Wild. Like six kills in two games is like pathetic for like 
doing well in a kill race. I just remember doing those, and that that shit just fell apart because we had so many people ready. People dropping uh, out. And, yep. Yep. Yeah. I only I only recently finally just like nuked the Discord that I had for it because I was just like I'm never <laughs> running one of these again. But I remember we had so many names in there too. Though we had Dude, Shab, we had Shab. I he carry. was good, right? I yep. remember that he was we had, good. We had Shab. We had I carry, who's actually like I'm pretty sure he's still semi pro, if not was at the time like a pro Fortnite player. But he was also involved in Smash to an extent. Yeah. Was Legend ha- in that? Um, I don't think I had Legend in at that he's time. Doing, I don't th- he was doing, he last is, I saw, he was doing some like Fortnite stuff. I know he, he was still doing does. Wild and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's like one of the only people still from the MY Future record that are that are actually still grinding it. Playing Fortnite, um, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've tried to communicate with him recently because I know I'm on my binge on that shit lately. But, are you? Uh, sadly, yeah. It's just, I haven't, I it's haven't down, downloaded that and updated that in a hot minute. It's really like... It's kind of a fun game again. I don't know. I know. I've been having last more time fun. I played it. I like kind of enjoyed it. Yeah, it, it, it's like when I want to play it seriously, I feel like I need someone that I can play it seriously with. Otherwise, if I play it seriously all the time, then it sucks, and then it's just too much. That's and like I still... Valorant for me. I can't. I can't yeah. play Valorant anymore unless mm-hmm. I'm like playing with someone else. Exactly. I've I've found that solo playing multiplayer games seriously is is only fun anymore with like Smash and that's just maybe because I'm starting to notice some progress but nevertheless um yeah, we had like a bunch of big names. I think I almost got a uh, Pew Pew U in there too. He almost wanted to play because back then he was doing it. We had Moki. Yeah, a lot of people were playing um, it. Yeah. We had we had fucking Fizzy. We had literally yeah. Slippy's de- Slippy's developer. It That's was Fizzy, right. Fizzy and Milk T were on a too. team. Yeah, That's yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. Uh, we just had such a bunch of great people. Dark Tooth too. That was the other one because yep. Dark Tooth and Wild. I'm pretty sure they teamed or something That's like that. That's cool. Um, but it was just such a fun time, and I, I still think back on that because commentating other events is just so different than Melee, and I think that yeah. was another part that led me to wanting to do commentary. What mm-hmm. is it in, in your mind that led you into it? Shout-outs um, to that segue. I'm trying to think because I didn't do much when we were at school. Right. I don't think maybe at all. You you did, did every so often when like you wanted to hop on. I know there were definitely times you and I would commentate in okay. college because we would host like um, I want to say we hosted like the Sub Zero Heroes or something like that, and you definitely commented. Did I commentate in that? I think you did for some of it. I did. Because, I like, did. I did well in one of them. One of them I didn't. Hmm. One of them I got top eight. I think. I do recall that, but I do not recall which one. So I don't remember. Maybe I'm wrong, I don't but I know. thought you did some. I no, because the first the first Sub Zero, I don't. That was the one with the crew battles. Right. Remember yep. that? Yep. And oh, I was I, I wasn't able to partake in it because Josh beat me. Josh can Always. hold that W over me. Don't worry. I don't think Josh got even got to even play in some of the games. Smiley. You know that's that's fair, but he did he did beat me and he was able to be in that. But other that's than cool. that, I mean, but what is it that you think led you into wanting to do more um, commentary? I think at first I was just I think it was in Connecticut. I thought we were just like ha- we're having different regionals, and I was like like hey, someone want to like hop on the mic? And I was like oh, mm-hmm. let me like talk about this. And it was around the time that I started to like just casually stream. Mm-hmm. And I think the combination of like getting used to streaming and talking to people like that and trying to explain what I was doing there, there was, I mean, a very obvious connection to commentary. Mm-hmm. And I was like, wait a minute, this is kind of cool. So it went from like just randomly sh- walk sitting on the mic for like a random tournament to being like, hey, when we get near the end, can I do the commentary? Mm-hmm. And then that kind of like spirals in there. But I'm sure we'll get into more of like things we've done in a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, at least as far as gigs that you'd say were like the favorites that you commentated on. I mean, what would you say was like your favorite gig that you've done thus far, at least? I think I'm going to say CT GamerCon. I think it was GamerCon 3. Um, It's the first one. It's the first tournament I did that had like a real production value behind it with like. A, it was like we had like our own setup and we had headphones and we had someone in our ear that was like doing things and letting us know and transitioning 
And it was like, wait, there's like a little bit of production behind this. <laughs> and that tournament, yeah. I mean, it was different than just like jumping in on the open mic yeah. at something. You want to hop I, in on this one, huh? Yeah, like yeah. come in for this game. Yep, yep. But um, I did because I, dub- I commentated um, doubles like top six and singles top six. Mm-hmm. So I got like, I essentially got like all the big stuff. And I commentated with Ricky, who's another Connecticut player. I love Ricky. And it was cool to do it with, like, a friend kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Is, <laughs> can you hear my fucking <laughs> stupid dog right yeah. now? He's literally... So, for for the people on audio, he's just right back here just fucking whining because I'm not petting him. <laughs> you are such a baby bitch. Yeah, no, come on. Yeah. So, like, now we're going to have... We're gonna have this little idiot here with us, uh, <laughs> nice for the for the time being. So, so that I also interviewed the winner. Mm-hmm. Um, so getting that as well is like, oh my goodness, the tournament's over. Now I'm here, like asking questions on the spot on the fly, talking with him about different things, and him coming back after not playing a while. Right. It was. Do you remember? Wait, who was it? Who? Yeah, it was hacks. Winning? It was hacks. Oh shit! The OG, yeah. the, so the the Leffen conspiracy <laughs> himself. So so yeah. So but it was but even still at the time it was like wow I'm like doing this and I was like wow I like I don't know also part of it and I mean was like hey look at me finding a different way to get involved with the tournament right because I mean I'm I mean I don't want to sound like I'm pretty good but I've still I wasn't at I never got to the point where I was like hey. Drew and G's probably gonna top eight this event and like I, these bigger things. I, I was know. like, I think, I think some I was of the like, pl- some of the tournaments you went to, I think you definitely had people that were like, okay, Drew's going to this. He's, you've got a pretty good chance, oh, no. especially when we were this out in like, Buffalo. That was yeah, out there. But like, I you said that, and I thought about the New England um, Arcadian, where there was mm-hmm. like a very real chance that I like was going to win that tournament, and like. Mm-hmm. I got absolutely stomped by J Not, which was worth it because J Not was like the sickest player I never knew. <laughs> and then I like completely busted out. I think I think I was like the fourth seed. Yeah. And there were people saying that I had a good bracket to win the event to getting mm-hmm. like seventeenth or thirteenth or something. Do you that know was... who you lost to in losers or I think it was Ant. Um I think he's okay. like Luigi Samus. I played him again later on. Yeah. another time and i beat him but you know we all have our tournaments but, yeah all have our... <laughs> but i mean for me i was like hey this is a different way i'm getting involved and in kind of things yep. and i know it was just still well let me let me get into yours before i keep talking more what's okay. your favorite commentary gig my favorite i mean i feel like you might even know this this one coming and people that people that have heard me talk about this before know that this was this was my favorite event by far in every degree. Yeah, you just mouthed it. I, I don't know if the audio got it, but Scorpius was was absolutely one of my favorite events that I did a lot I've of commentary at that. I did so much commentary. Shout out to Snoo and Face and all the guys from uh from Long Island that you did were some lot of like cruise, right? Too? I did cruise I did cruise commentary. I did like everything with cruise commentary with uh with Tadpole and then with um uh, I think his name was Samo. Um, yeah. Yeah, with him. And then uh, what else? Then I did Pools commentary for a little bit. And then I even did some of uh, some of like, I think it was top 32 bracket. Um, nice. There was just, there was so much that they, oh, and doubles. Yeah, did so yeah. much in there too. Um, it was just a lot of fun to get to to do with everyone. And it was the first event that I ever was actually like funded to go to. Like they cool. they paid for all of my food. They paid my entry if I even wanted to play. Um I got housed with Wild, so it's not like yeah. they had to pay anything for that. You were yeah. eating my fucking wrist guard. Right. Um he was just <laughs> eating this this little <laughs> wrist guard thing that Callie got me for under my desk. Um <laughs> But yeah, like everything about that event was just so homey. That like, was a good everyone, event. Everyone from Long Island is forever like one of the nicest people ever, even if I hate some of the play styles and get bustered out and bracket from some of them. But that was another part of it that I loved it. I'm like, the commentary yeah. was a lot of fun. 
I I got drunk a majority of it. That was fun. I even yeah. entered bracket, and during that, I actually played well. Um, I didn't make it out of my pool, but like I still I I went in and did my best yeah. and felt accomplished with it. Um, I think that was my first Long Island event. That was your first one. You didn't go to like any weeklies or I anything think, before that. No, not at all. I I think I went to Scorpius. I think I went to Omega Two and Omega mm-hmm. Three. Mm-hmm. But I think Scorpius happened first. Right. Yes, it did. Because I don't think I got to go to any of the other ones. Because by that point, I was uh, back to trying to figure out what the hell I'm doing with my life. Unless I did go to Omega Two. I think you might have been go. I you might have been in Virginia by then. Would I have been in Virginia by then? I actually don't. Know. I don't know. I have no idea, but I know to- Omega Three. I traveled from Connecticut for mm-hmm. because I picked up a friend's tuba on the way. <laughs> he lived in Long that's Island. That's how he we. That's he, how we keep it memorized in the. He's books. like. He's like. You can have this tuba if you just pick it up from my parents' house in Long Island. I was like, okay, right. and I was like, can I do it in like three weeks? And he's like, yeah. I was like, cool, going to Omega. <laughs> Sick. We take those. <laughs> Um, but yeah, overall, I just remember it being such a really, really good time. Um, yeah. Long Island's just always known for being the homies. And then, of course, uh, for those that would even want to view it, I made like a whole documentary about it. Just that tournament experience. It's on the YouTube. Um, that was one and of that my, was, oh, what's that? That was one of my Twitter like bios for or profile pictures for a little bit because you had a picture of me with my like Fredonia Gamers Guild jersey or shirt. Oh that yeah, had my tag I on did. the back. I was like, yeah, I, did. I made it in I there. I did have that. <laughs> It was a, uh, it was just such a really fun event, and they let me film as much as I wanted to do. They gave me the the gameplay footage. It took a long ass time to put the video out, but um, I mean, yeah, so definitely, a, definitely. I mean, when you think about like the video is like forty five minutes to an hour, right? It is. Yeah, it's a forty two minute video. Like you think about say. that, it's not something that's gonna happen over the weekend. You know, yeah, there's some like people, so much you have to go through. Might. It didn't help I mean, that like. If, <sighs> Like, again, I love Face and I love Snoo and everything. I think it's Face who controls a lot of the Aeon's uh, the Twitch VODs account and whatnot. The out. VODs were for privated for oh. almost almost two months. And it's like, yeah. that was oh, <laughs> that was what I needed uh, to finish the edit. I was on, like, yeah. the top eight portion. I had, I had done the rest of the story lining. I, I pieced everything together so it all was ready. And then it was just gameplay that I needed. And nothing was uploaded. And then it gets uploaded, and he never gave me download perms. And I was just so <laughs> tired of waiting that yeah. I just ultimately screen recorded you, it. I was going to say, you just like going OBS? and Yep. And that's why Dang. so much of the quality is kind of ass. He is oh, staring yeah. on the headphone jack. Oh, my God. You are never in here again when we record. Um, <laughs> so, ultimately, I would say definitely overall that was my favorite event yeah. that, that I had done um least favorite i i know if you don't want to cover yours i know my least favorite was certainly something where i don't remember what like uh a regional tournament it was um but it was one from from like cap region in, in new york back when i was up there and it was just like at first it was a bad environment like it just smelled terrible that day oh, no. the the smashers definitely ignored their deodorant that day um and I go to commentate round one pools, and it's next to this guy whose tag I, I do not remember, and it's probably for the better that I don't because I would put him on blast for this. Oh, but the no. dude just I, I know this event. He he comes and sits down next to me and just makes like fart jokes like fart jokes? Fart jokes the whole time, just like really uh. like not commentating the game, but more like trying to have a conversation, basically trying to pull what like and and this isn't an excuse for like top top commentators or whatever too, but like mm-hmm. trying to pull like what Scar and like Lovage do, which is where like they practically ignore the game and just kind of just talk their own shit. And he was trying to do that, and I'm like, yeah, like that was a really cool recovery that he just did. And he's just like, yeah, dude, I went I went to the bathroom like 30 minutes ago, and it was like really bad. I'm like, what? I- I think I think I was at that. I think I was at that event because I think yeah. we talked about this. We probably did because eventually I got to a point where I you didn't want to comment. You were getting just, tired of it. It that was, was uncomfortable. The, that was the see me on land. I think I went to. It was, it was a see me on land. It yeah. was. I w- I think I'm guessing it was the first or the second one because I was gonna go mm. to one of them and commentate. Yeah. I like worked it out. They had, like applications, and then I got really sick. Yep. And it was yep. like right before spring break, and I was like. 
I was like, man, I'm about to drive like six hours home from spring break. Yeah. Or maybe I was in maybe I was in Hart- in Hartford at the time. I don't know. But it was mm-hmm. like it's really not a good decision to drive to Albany to do a tournament when I'm feeling like garbage. Yeah. So Probably I didn't for the end better. Up going. Yeah. Right. But yeah, I mean and it's not even so much that like I blame him so much or that like I would really wanna like shit on him all that much for it because at the end of the day, like he's he's trying, like he's putting himself out there. He's doing his own thing. Yeah, Yeah, I just, personally, that's not what I look for in a commentary partner that I don't know. If I know you and, like, we're we're on that front where we just can can mess around with each other, but I also know I can count on you to be a a commentator, then, like, that's that's okay. I can can do that. But he was a completely random dude. It's very similar to, like... I know there there are tons of people out there that watch like GR Smash compilations, and I feel like GR Smash uploaded already all some of the the more pr- more obvious examples of just like awkward moments in like commentary, and it's like yeah, stuff like that is just not it. Yeah. Like just stop. Don't you don't need to be that weird, dude. You <laughs> can be you can be funny. You can have your moments, but like. I just couldn't. That was a bad time. Yeah. That was a bad time. Well, I, I'd kind of already talked about going to, like, tournaments that are maybe more for players than, like, the production value where, like, the mic is, like, right next to the crowd and you're just, like, screaming into the mic and that's the only yep. way you get to get heard. Right. And I've had that for, like, a regional. I'm like, yeah, this isn't really what I had in mind, but, like, I'm going to do it. Especially, like, going solo and just, like, yeah, let's kind of wing it. Mm-hmm. kind of thing but this kind of but you were just kind of talking about this kind of goes into what we want commentary to do for an event what do you mm-hmm. look for what kind of aspects do you have for like a commentator what kind of things do they look to do i mean funny enough for everything i know i just talked about i mean i do look for humor i do look for something yeah that but can... there's there's different levels of that i 1 million percent agree with you i yeah. i 100 percent agree there are different levels I I do look for humor though. I think finding comedy within anything leads to to good audio and leads yeah. to just just a fun time in general for anyone, whether you know what's going on or not. You see, uh, you see Pikachu or not Pikachu. You see Peach do a down smash in melee, and then you could have someone just be like, "There she goes spinning the dreidel again," and it's like that's 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 silly. That's silly. It's stupid. But like that's something that's like okay. I would be okay with that, but I also appreciate yeah. some form of insight, which I don't expect 100%, have, yeah. not even everyone to have, but like 100% accuracy. And I know mm. that's something that really pisses me off are like those those people that are just horny to call you out for being wrong. Oh, like, I had that happen once. Oh, I was, know was, you did. Yeah, it was like a top player too. He won the it event. Sure was. And he yeah. took a he took a moment, a really it was like a round one pools set up versus mm-hmm. like a puff you knew he was gonna four stock both games mm-hmm. and i'm just like i'm filling time at this point no one cares that this no one cares about the set and he like pulls something from that when he like played grand finals like two sets versus leighton mm-hmm. and i'm giving like actual commentary and i'm like bro if you're gonna like talk like let's talk to that set and then he's like mm-hmm. he just kind of no like, but we don't off. we don't talk about that though we're yeah. just here to to rip on you for Smile. not being a hundred percent, you know. Oh, I did a forward smash at twenty percent. I did a forward smash at twenty <laughs> percent, and it's supposed to kill. Actually, if he's not at twenty one point four eight percent, it doesn't kill. Jeez, who put this idiot on the mic? Like, shut up, shut up. Yeah. You're you're fucking playing right now. You have no no need yeah. to be that guy. And and I I find that shit to be super fucking and annoying. But and. And there's there's different levels to it. Like mm-hmm. I'll go in and like I said, I I go into it with more sort of analyzing, okay, this is what's going on. Maybe I can pick up patterns and things. But like obviously you're not gonna know everything. I I mm-hmm. try to stay away from saying like very specific things that I don't yep. know. Yep. But like, I mean, even in the moment, no one's gonna be like it's no, also everything. like God forbid, God forbid you're even off half the time. And I know you at least. I don't. I don't want to speak for like everyone in the world, mm-hmm. but like 
the easiest way to avoid feeling bad about projecting misinformation is saying something as easily as I I'm not think, sure. Yeah. I think or yeah, even ending yeah. it with I'm not sure but I'm pretty sure this. Like yeah. you could say that and then it's like boom, you it's, you it's, entirely it's the tone. Yeah. Yeah, you should entirely be devoid of all in my opinion criticism that has to do with accuracy you can 100 percent critique the fact that it's like oh that's interesting that you didn't know that here is the actual fact now hopefully you know but someone that's going to look at that and be like look at this fucking idiot who thinks he knows it all you verbatim yeah. said i think or i i believe yeah. so it's like those are the type of things that that blow my mind yeah. um so at least someone that has some knowledge on the game yeah. so i'm not speaking to or commentating with someone that I have to explain everything about to, I would, I would hope would be someone in, in my realm that I would appreciate. But I also think it's important to know that there are people that are going to start like that. Sometimes maybe they get dragged into something to have to be a commentator in a moment that they don't know enough about. But I certainly would hope that the person I'm commentating with, I, I would appreciate humor. I would appreciate some form of insight and just, enthusiasm if you if yeah. you talk like this the entire time and uh oh that was a really yeah that was a good back air by that the puff they up throw rust yep and we're on to the next that stop. is a they, kill they did ban battlefield you know that is one of the most me like stages that exist in this game like bro <laughs> like, no get some inflection in there truly any emotion whatsoever but i mean that also when i think about commentary the the hype the excitement is part of it no one you can go and watch analysis of sets from like top players if that's what you're Mm -hmm. looking for but there's more there's there's i think there's like a mix of education and like energy that goes into commentary agree like i especially at majors and there's some people that do this really really well with like round one pools of ca- talking about things is like hey this person really might not know much about things we'll kind of assume that they know things about, about like wave dashing and they'll know what that means if i'm talking about di but we'll explain right. oh this is why this happens this is what this person's kind of look for and like that kind of education is like awesome mm-hmm. and i think that kind of thing and then there's different moments you're not going to be explaining that much about Mart's up till and its applications when you're watching Mango vs. Zane. Right. Just right. different and there's, contexts. There's also just different games with different commentary in itself. Like you can mm-hmm. look at, for example, Counter Strike, which has like basically color commentary on it. Like they're calling yes. out every little thing that's happening because you can, right? Like you can and you know because it's a series of of they threw the grenade here, the shot was fired here, enemy here, dead there, like this it, gun was used to this it flows off a bit easier at least in my mind whereas with melee how do you commentate i mean sometimes they do it where it's like it, fucking d1 commentary forward air forward air down air ah! like, they can did, commentate some yeah. of it did you know that for some of these like i i can only talk to valorant because i looked it up for something for valorant for some mm-hmm. of these they will have people hired this person is a play-by-play caster for this event yeah and this yep. is a color caster so yeah, they, they these do that with counter kind of set too. up Mm-hmm. No, they yeah. they make it that way because they have the analyst desk. They esports truly is as big, if not growing to be as big as regular yeah. sports in their form of commentary, and that's the biggest reason why I think com- it's important. To yeah, me. commentary. Yeah, and think this is also a big thing, and we'll get the iconic moments, the history that's made. Like mm-hmm. you could give like to like a lot of melee players that have been the scene. You could give like three seconds of a sound bite and it's crazy there's like these portions of our mind and you can be like oh that was and this is on my thing this is that was left yep. in mango genesis 4 yep yep that you was can't just force that was me. that was that was hot that was hacks versus that was hacks versus mango at the big house mm. like mm-hmm. these things these moments are cemented by that and, like, we could always just go, oh, do you remember that time that weird thing happened with, like, S2J's dare on a bait? But, like, having right. the, the commentators be there with you going, what is happening? What the hell's happening? Right. Exactly. It's just, like, so big. So this kind of leads what – and this doesn't have to be just Melee. 
But what mm. are like your most memorable moments in commentary? Like you think about a game or you think about like a moment mm-hmm. and like give a little context to where it comes from, but like what's your biggest moments in commentary? Biggest things that that stand out to me actually really aren't even melee uh commentary based. I mean, if there's one that I would reference from that, it's it's Axe versus Silent Wolf. Um, one, yeah. that, that whole thing, the, the, the amount of energy and progs ending with that was always incredible to me, Yeah. but outside of that, it's mostly within counter strike. Um, a lot of moments from when, and, and not to sound like nationalist by any way here, cause there's so no, much. No, there's different so eras and like, that. especially in like these tax shooters where like different regions do way better. I, exactly. Like NA is not known for doing <laughs> like so good in in so many different shooters but when when like cloud nine or team liquid uh or or any of these big na names and a hundred thieves is now one that's that's really starting to pop off but back uh way back when counter-strike had the the cloud nine team with uh with the with and this might be a bit before if you ever paid attention to it hiko used to be on cloud nine i knew for, that That's, for counter strike i've watched a couple of documentary little episode things about hiko one of the the craziest things was a i want to say it was an eco round if not a pistol round on dust two and it's it's one that everyone knows this for because it's like a meme at this point these inhuman reactions that's the like one that's the one counter-strike <laughs> clip i know that's the only everyone bit of counter-strike it. commentary i actually know because it was said beautifully perfectly encapsulated the moment of everyone just hands on their head what the fuck did he just do how did he just one two like no fucking sweat on the brow man's just another day in the office and continues to be consistent that whole event if not that the the um i'm trying to think i want to say it was cloud nine versus phase in in one of the last north american um i want to say it was na in boston uh one of the boston events that happened uh, and they just played fucking incredible. Stewie 2K out of his mind, Skadoodle out of his mind, Automatic, uh, in- incredible. Like all these guys were playing insane. Uh, and the reactions that were just happening from the commentators were able mm-hmm. to match the energy to the crowd. And I think that was another thing that I didn't quite get to in uh, in what I was going to talk about with uh, things that I think make for commentary. But if you're in an environment like that, that is so huge oh, with the crowd. and there can be an audience around it, matching your crowd energy when they're hype you're the one there. leading it you are the one telling like you are making sure they know why they're fucking hype right now yeah and and those were some of the key moments to me um i i'd say that was yeah besides like any extreme melee moments those would be it what about you i got one this is okay this is, okay. This is actually this is a rocket league clip or rocket league moment it's actually the first tournament i ever watched the first real pro tournament i ever watched and it Uh ended up being probably the most iconic moment in rocket league history so just sort of like the give context so obviously rocket league car soccer i don't have to give that context hot wheels playing with a basketball (laughs) well a soccer ball but um so they have like rlcs um rocket league championship series it's like a league Mm -hmm. so you have one for na eu um oceania there they have more they're expanding more it's not the point so um na and eu are really like the big teams especially back then i think it was Mm -hmm. rlcs season five i think it was in london and it was it's the bracket reset of bracket reset of grand finals so this is best of seven sets for grand finals, by the way. Mm-hmm. So it's like 30, 40 minute sets. You're not getting to like counter strike set lengths or anything like that, but like more than mm-hmm. we see in like melee. Right. So long sets, we are game seven. Like it's legitimately like la- like game seven with four seconds left. We have Dignitas versus NRG. Dignitas is like the dynasty team. You okay. think about like you think about like Tom Brady and like all of his Super Bowl wins over like such a short time. Like yep. there was like five championships. I think Turbo Pulsa on the team had three championships in his name out of the five. Kadop was in all five of the grand finals. 
Okay. Like like they're like they were like the the team. Mm-hmm. And energy has was the other people. So with four seconds left, Dignitas gets ahead. So one okay. goal. So in Rocket League, if if you, I don't know if you, everyone knows this, the when the clock hits zero, you wait until the ball touches the ground. Hits the ground. Yep. For it to be over. So with four seconds left, like Dignitas essentially gets the kickoff. I think and you sent me this too. I yeah. probably did send it to you. Yeah. And <laughs> it's it's like it's like the most miraculous. There's no way this ball is gonna stay alive. <laughs> sort of moment it's i was showing this to someone the other day actually and the the one of the commentators um shogun he's he's probably my we'll talk i'll talk about him later he's my favorite commentator like ever but he's he's sort of calling it casting it and is like the greatest goal to tie it up send it to overtime of game seven and he just like absolutely like screams like this is rocket Larry with like a British accent, <laughs> and it was just it was so like pure, like it's memed on now and it's all the time, which is great. But it was such like a in the moment like matching like matching the intensity of a land waiting for that zero yep. second goal, and it was yep. I've never seen a commentary or like moment in an esport like come to that. Yeah, that sort That's, of intensity. That is a commentator that cares way more about the game than than the players might. Like that is someone that's there for the entire integrity of the game. Yeah, the culture. He's, yeah, the the commentary, everything. Yeah, that's amazing. I I do remember you sending me that clip. I probably I, yeah. I still don't know very much about Rocket League other than yes, it's car soccer. Yeah. But there's that. there is so much that goes within that game and I've tried to play it and I've tried to be yeah. anywhere remotely decent yeah. and it can't happen. There's there's a lot of really good commentators through NA and yeah. EU, but like Chogan and then Johnny Boy, they're like the scar and toph. Like all the biggest events, they are like the duo that does it. Okay. And okay. like Shogun, just like his storytelling, just his voice. Like mm-hmm. anything that I like would want in a commentator, I like see it in Shogun, and I'm like, oh my right. god! Like there's events there he could be commentating like a random like EU weekly or or little tournament that I don't care about at all. But if he's on the mic, I'm like watching. Yep. He's that he's that good that I'm like I need to hear what he's saying and like his how he spins stories and stuff because he's just got the good voice. He's for, got it. for he's making got things it. go with it. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, because I, I felt that way very similarly about um, if you know him, uh, Golden Boy. Yes, yes, Golden yeah. Boy. He um, MC. He does a lot. He emceed the Rocket League land that I went to. I went to a Rocket League land Did in he? Jersey. That's sick. Yeah, he emceed that, and I started following him from that. Mm-hmm. I think he's been someone that's been great and versatile within their commentary. Yeah, someone that actually I wish would do more versatile commentary. I don't think he has because the only thing I know him from within commentary uh, would be Fortnite, and that's Courage. I think Courage yeah. has such a voice. No, well, he, and that's where he Lupa. started, dude. He started with Call of Duty. Yeah, that's where he. That's where he became like a figurehead. At all? Well, I thought was he was just a community casting. member. Was no, he, he was a was caster. He a commentator. So he oh. started. He started off um, as like an intern. There, he somewhere maybe it was in the Courage and Nade Shot show, but they had okay. so there's some co- podcast or maybe it was someone else's podcast he was on. But yeah, he was like, it was like a oh I'm a kid I'm gonna take a shot going to like go do like a internship with this thing. And mm-hmm. there was like a daily report and he like filled in and they're like, wait, you can like do this. And then he got and he was commentating like Call of Duty events. So call that's where he first I got guess that into makes sense the esports yeah. scene. Yeah. OK, because then, yeah, I guess I haven't really branched out as far as especially with like the new game Warzone and whatnot. Like I haven't cared much for it. So, yeah, if he's if he's done anything, not, not that, anything for I mean, that, not anything okay. for Warzone. But yeah, I love I love like him. I mean, we we were watching like when he was like the, like the meme broad the meme casting he would do and like like right. their lobbies were so good. But I mean, then we got to like the Fortnite World Cup and he did a fantastic job. Him, uh, Lupo, Lupo another one who I thought was amazing. Did you know he moved to YouTube? Yeah, him and, I him had and no t- idea. Same week as Tim the Tap Man. Was it really? Yeah, I it, was didn't like know a, it was like a few days week. before. 
that's so freaking funny yeah. it's so many people switching over it's crazy yeah. but uh yeah i i only just recently found out about that but yeah him yeah. uh i always saw lupo and courage did great together uh yeah. whenever they would commentate monster d face uh is another one that comes I, to mind as far as like, like outside stuff, right or at least that's what He's, i met him from that's again that's where i've learned him from um i wouldn't say i i can give much credit behind like anything else with yeah. uh, what he's done but his voice is very solid and and like there to again cover things well in depth has the energy has the knowledge at least when i've heard him commentate fortnite he definitely sounds very yeah. in tune with what he's talking about him and sundown i think did a lot of commentary together okay. um sun sundown the resident fortnite looking stoner um but <laughs> otherwise um i think if if i'm to name any favorite commentators uh unfortunately but also not to tie back into my roots some of the the biggest homies to ever bless the world uh i wonder if you might know who i'll say with this one but uh definitely brandon and phil yeah. homemade waffles and uh do you fills me those those two and uh i guess prog would be would be some of my favorites because the the humor is yeah immaculate when it came to i mean to that Wapen history that Phil. history is like just goes so far yeah did you see so, so it was back. summit they were talking yeah. about summit um it was the this summit and they were talking about the prize money and there was Who? a clip it went Who, around Phil and brandon i think so i think they were both on the couch and there was a couple other people because summit couch is big and they, oh, were, okay. they were talking about some old big event and they were talking mm. about how like 80 bucks was like the pool yeah and then they're yeah. like yeah this has like over 80k and there was like a yeah. little moment and it was like man how much times have changed but it was yeah. like it was the there was so much history in that clip that they was just, like they just sit crazy they just sit there and yeah. take it in and it's yeah. like it's like i i had no idea what they were talking about it was so old and like ancient melee history that like it was only the people that have been in the scene for like 10 15 years that even yeah. like got it it was insane it, it is amazing like again as much as this isn't a smash base podcast always paying like always paying homage back to like where we we started from and shit yeah. like i mean it is incredible to think about that game and just how far things really have come up from it um, and to hope that they can stay in that direction. I mean, shit, we have Summit backing us really, really well. But, um, I mean, realistically, that's it. Like, so. Nintendo All-Stars has it covering pretty well, and I know we, we talked a hell of a lot about them last episode, but, you know, it, it would be nice. Mm -hmm. It would really, really be nice to, to see it be that way permanently, just have Nintendo yeah. understand how much we fucking do love this game. It... it I, I almost want to imagine there wouldn't be as much drama in the community if Nintendo supported it at all. I, I really don't because then why the fuck would anyone care? Yeah. Why? Do, and I mean, that's they really don't want to do it. But like this yeah. kind of this kind of gets to the um, stuff that was just happening with people getting um, doing the ultimate broadcast and. I'm yeah. I'm just gonna say it. Um, but I I have strong feelings about this, but it's also in apples and oranges. People are mad at Nintendo. This is an ultimate gig. Ultimate's yep. doing its game. So like before we even like have these conversations, it's wild to see people like hugs even like making such wrongly drastic comparisons to like going on strike and crossing picket lines when it's all about yeah. like a video game. But it's also not even a melee event they're talking about. Right, which was and like yet the first. He's, he's yeah, he's going crazy over it. And like it's, Crimson Blur made a comment too, like hope the money was worth it, kind of like saying they like, probably like fucking was. Yeah. yeah, dude. TK Breezy said like I can't confirm the Nintendo money is. <laughs> like, I mean that's like that, I mean Good. that's that's what that's why you do commentary like trying to do it as a career, right? I mean yeah. it was all around Vicky Kitty. Vicky Kitty does EA events, Blizzard events. She just did the Apex legends tournament that just happened that's crazy she's, she's, she's all she's all up. over the place yeah good and like there good. was a comment Get like that bread like hugs was saying something she's like sorry i can't do it tomorrow i'm commentating the na and the eastern 
or the mid European Middle East regions of Apex. So I'll be a little busy or something. And it's like, yeah, That's you sick. will. Like, hell yeah. yeah. And I mean, to be fair, like every, I guess this is where it, it blows my mind because like what hugs hosted a fucking beer event, like a craft beer event. What on, on, uh, SSC recently. And he did like some beer tasting. Did you see any of that? I I didn't. I knew that. I saw a, twi- a clip of he had like this kids bo- this kids band playing at it. Yeah. So at at SSC he ran a craft beer test uh, tasting that he organized and put together. Sick, sick event. That's okay. so cool, dude. Getting that type of stuff together, craft beers. Uh, you know, just having a fun time with your homies. Maybe even getting to meet up with Hugs, who I know is pretty idolized within the smash scene Mm -hmm. um you know that's that's got to be a cool experience and like yeah i would have even partaken in that however i can also be on the same side of this fence here that would go to that event as much as i would also commentate a gig nintendo would pay me to do yeah i would if anything i would love to get as close to nintendo as i can to talk to them that's what that's what people were saying too is like you know if there's like ever like a a world that you i i don't think there's a world that that nintendo cares about melee not which is but if there is even a chance it's Mm. gonna be people like that are like you want like almost ambassadors like like no but like like mango being like oh sakura i didn't know you made brawl too like there's a clip of like that like what do you expect if they're like <laughs> the like the face of melee is just like doesn't know what's going on just like being a dick yeah yeah but like, like melee heads melee heads make it out to be like nintendo shit on us all these years and now they they still won't like help us out it's like dude yes yes they have they have entirely shitted on you but do you really think continuing to shit back do you really think you know just like fucking acting as if you know you're you're on a higher up scale and you're you're going to somehow show them that we deserve their or we don't yeah. need them in this meanwhile dude you've been grassroots this whole time we've we've been that way and as much as you know some people find pride in that some of us look at this shit and go i would love to make a living in this That'd be so, so if cool, we right? could like chill and have nintendo actually like us yeah that would be great yeah, but they're just gonna stay and like, on this high. And I mean, there's no way this will ever come out. But I like, I wonder what like the orgs think. You know, like there's still mm. like organizations that are like sponsoring players that yeah. are, like making a living in a game that they know that the company hates them. Like, like isn't isn't Hugs like sponsored by Dignitas? Like, I thought he was. I don't know if he still is. I don't know if he is um, anymore. Um, yeah. I know, like, but, like, but another I mean, one. This is kind of like, we still comedic. got we still got TSM, Cloud Nine, Panda, all these people. But he- see those those though. I want to actually also shout outs to Post Its. You ever just go like that with Post Its? It's just That's such nice. a relieving feeling. Um, sh- like shout out to this one's a little bit more comedic, but uh, uh, critical. If if yeah. you know who he is yeah, from YouTube, gaming. literally just literally signed, signed Moki. what and three or four ultimate, ultimate players, players Moki. one guilty gear player, and then Moki. Yeah. Like he didn't That's he didn't point. have to do any. Well, of this, he he yet, knows about the Nintendo stuff. Did you see? He does. Yep, yeah, there does. was a thing. He gifted, I, I strongly keep up with him. He he gifted Cody. He did like a oh going subs. around um gifting streamers like big YouTubers yep. do that. And he yeah. gave it to Cody, and he's like, "Yeah, man, like I know that what like Nintendo's been doing to them is like shitty." Mm-hmm. But yep, no, a hundred percent. I I always thought that was so hype when I, I remember saw that seeing that. Happen. And I went around. I've been I've been huge into Critical since God. It has to be going on like I watched him for the... one thing. I mm. never really saw his kind of. I really didn't even know who he was. Yeah, and then someone I don't know who. Mm-hmm. I don't know where it came from. <laughs> someone said, "Have you ever heard of this game called?" Let me let me let me say oh, it right. Oh God, I'm I'm scared. I don't know what's what it this called. Is. Mr. Krabs overdoses on ketamine. <laughs> Mr. Krabs overdoses on ketamine. He got the, the, the he world almost record. kept world record on that for a while. I don't know if he's still the most has random it. thing ever. And people were like, "Yo, he's like doing this." And I was like, "What?" And I was like, "What are you even talking about?" And I like watched all of his videos about that whole like little saga shit was it was lit it was actually uh, like oh my crazy. god but yeah that's the only thing i know about him but i've like heard of him do that 
there are like different versions of the um, game. Oh my yeah. god. Wait, is he even on this list? Where is I don't he? Know. Critical's like not even Oh my god. There's someone named Huge Meat who has a, who's 38th place with a 25. There you go. Oh my god. These are so funny. But yeah, he he was grinding hard for that. There's a with ketamine, without ketamine, boat and boatless. Oh my god, there's two different versions. That's funny. Oh my god, this shit's so funny. Oh. I can't. But yeah, that that's so funny that that's how you heard of him. He's been yeah. on YouTube for years. So, so many years. And now he's he's really done well with like... He's he's definitely made a lot of money and he's been doing a lot to he always used to give back to charities, which yeah. was huge, but then stopped because charities can't be trusted. Um, so now it looks like he's just doing a lot to just kind of like give back where he can. And so by sponsoring all these guys, I I have become definitely when those moist esports headbands come out, I will be right. buying one. That's like that is a guarantee. And like it's just nice to be like, hey, like we support this. Like that's kind of that's cool, and it's like, hey, not all not all things are like super or like, but there there's grassroots, and I mean melee players. Exactly. that's the biggest thing for them, right? Like the grassroots behind it. Exactly, and and I think that that's where a lot of players need to kind of understand that. Truth be told, let it like either you need to come to terms with the understanding that. The only other way that we will receive money from it is other brands jumping in to try and support. Yeah. But realize that, number one, if you really think orgs are going to support or or brands are going to support like a group that is very... Well, that's very openly... Against... Fuck Nintendo. Yeah. Like, very openly shitting on a brand. You're not going to get anywhere. Yeah. And what that's if, just what only going to make if, What worse. if they do something that you don't like in it? Is it going to become, like, fuck Logitech? Yeah, you're going to do this... Like, exactly. You're gonna like, I don't want that around. in my brand. But. Exactly. And that's why a lot of these brands just stick to sponsoring events here and there. But like, yeah. they're what? Maybe providing us the venue? Like, yeah. And I mean, that's huge in itself sometimes. And I don't know. The world is greedy. There's a lot of greed in the world and people but just can't have it all the way. Talking about, um, I meant to talk about this before. So I, I'm a musician as well. I Not as much mm -hmm. now, but I gig and perform on trombone. And mm -hmm. one of the things, especially with all the commentator stuff, I it's what I call a gig economy. Um, there's no you, people probably think of like individual or individual contractors, more official term. But like no one, no one is like signed a contract to commentate all of these events that are coming up. Same way as like I'm not getting a contract to play all of these gigs I do. So mm -hmm. there's a whole sort of nuance in like world that goes on with this sort of gig economy where, hey, like how you perform this big thing, um, like the PR, like your face value it means a lot. If you're someone that's going to be like an absolute jerk, people aren't going to want to hire you. And there's no there's no really way around that. And it's not always mm -hmm. like, a, oh, we're not going to call you. It's just, oh, we happen to find this person instead. Is it because you didn't right. do a good job? Is it because we heard that you were talking shit about us? Like, there's a lot of things that happen, and that's something that isn't really talked much about, but it's also because the people, the top commentators, are still also commentators that live in this economy. Even Toast, exactly. even these people up there, it's all, it's the thing. And that's why you're going to see people like Vicky Kitty getting something with Nintendo, because she's not out here saying, fuck Nintendo, all the things that are going wrong they go hey we know that you can do this we can take you in and those are mm -hmm. good paying gigs you take those gigs <laughs> like we that's the those. thing that happens but so one of those things and you which is also sort of good is you don't see commentators ripping on each other because mm -hmm. they get it it's just when you get to the top players that they're like oh i'm just gonna rip on them because i don't have any like stake invested in this and i'm just gonna bring people yep. down kind of yeah. thing where that comes from you're not going to see toph go oh man this commentary was horrible mm -hmm. you know what i mean and sometimes things don't go super well and that happens and this transitioned even better than i thought it would to a story <laughs> that i want to tell about a commentary situation that didn't go well and there's no yeah. no harm intended because this person is a very successful man and i think 
not doing well at this event won't bother him at all. I don't. I haven't told you this story. I'm I don't think you've told Yeah, this. I'm like, wait a minute. So, where are we going? <laughs> let's let's set the Strap scene. In. COVID nineteen hits, and yes. Rocket League doesn't hold the land. Okay, it's Why? about because of COVID. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> well, it was around the time that Valorant held its first land, and yikes. <laughs> so so they were Rocket League people were like, oh, it's gonna happen. Mm-hmm. And it it didn't. And they said, we're not doing it, so we're going to find other ways. We have all this money that was supposed to be the end of this huge series, this season. And they did, they call them Spring Series events. So they had an NA Spring okay. Series, EU Spring Series, Oceania, whatever. So they're like, we want to bring out all the stops. We want to bring out all the stops. So for the grand finals of the Spring Series, they brought mm. in professional soccer player Landon Donovan to go to commentate along with the two casters for the Rocket League. So on paper, yeah, on paper, like, man, this could be cool. But what you, what you get is just a guy who does not play much video games who has no idea what's going on, and it was just an entire set of the commentators talking, trying to like explain how the game works. But I mean, and they did the best they could with the situation. They would find times talking about like game day nerves and tournaments over the span of one day. So they were finding ways, yeah. they were doing as good of a job as they could trying sure. to get. Landon Donovan to be able to talk about something he's comfortable with because he has no idea what's happening on the screen at all. Mm -hmm. There's no way he can. He knows what offense and defense are, but like you're not rotating from about to shoot all the way back to your net on, um, in, in soccer, there's more people for that. There's more ground to cover, but it was, it was, it was weird. And Rocket League has been trying to experiment with different, sorts of sets and different tournament structures and for this one there was a winners and a losers bracket but instead of having the losing team be able to do a bracket reset and then play another set the team and winners just started up 1-0 in a best of seven what What the fuck it was was very weird yeah it was a very bad format and i don't think they did it again good yeah well the, what they're doing now is even weirder. They're doing best of sets. So there's like best of three sets for like big things, which is even weirder in my opinion, because then it's like best three, three best of many games, three best set? of seven sets between two teams for grand finals. And oh like, yeah, God. that that's its own thing. That just happened. There's just one that just happened like this weekend or last weekend. But the worst part, oh, the set was not even a good set. The team oh, ran away. No. They th- they had three o, so they four o'd in grand finals, and they were up a game. So there was only three games that happened. Oh, <laughs> so it was like trying to bring Landon Donovan. He had no idea the game wasn't even good. So it wasn't even like some. It was it was like the worst set I'd seen in a long time. So like it was nothing good to commentated by about. the worst commentators yeah. and like and the other commentators and one of them he's usually a host, so he's not usually doing like this sort of play by play casting. So yeah. like he was probably out of his element, but they were like, we want you to do this with him. So, so this heavily reminds me of like it was, it was the a mess. What what is it? The Fortnite pro ams that they did. Oh. I don't know if you remember those, but like they they did something very similar, except not commentary wise, where they would put these pro who have no idea like what they're doing child players. No, I mean like pro like oh, Fortnite, pro Fortnite players with a random celebrity or a random sport pro like like what the fuck are these guys doing here and you're like oh look uh, like, little timmy 6509 is playing with you know uh fucking like tyree shaw or whatever the fuck like random basketball pro mm-hmm. 82 over here and like 
I mean, I get it, I guess. Well, there was a while that, like, some of those sports teams were trying to, like, add, like, get people to play Fortnite and almost, like, advertise the NFL people doing it like that. Yeah. I mean, it would make sense if they get a cut from it. I mean, yeah. shit, there's there's football skins, there's soccer skins, yeah. there's basketball skins in Fortnite. Yeah. So, like, it wouldn't shock me if they get a cut of it. But also, at the end of the day, I'm like, he's trying to eat my wrist guard. Like, eat it. Do it. You fucking won't. Um, like, ultimately, it. I think it makes sense in, like, somewhat of a logical perspective. I like, where... I like the... Oh, sorry. Keep going. No, I was just saying, like, it, it makes some sense where, you know, if you're a fan of random basketball player 82 over here, like, yeah, yeah, you'll probably be like, you know, let me see this this funny game that this guy plays now. And, oh, look, it's kind of exciting. And it can help maybe from a marketing standpoint a bit, or yeah. something like that. But I think some of these communities or not even communities, but like the game developers themselves don't understand how much sometimes that can just be a slap in the face to a competitive scene that's trying to be made like if you're going to be out here saying like oh look uh fucking like i don't know lebron james is out here playing with fucking isn't he uh, in fortnite now i don't know mongrel yeah lebron james is in Pretty fortnite sure, yeah. now he is yeah 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 so it's like you have lebron james playing with mr savage m <laughs> like Savage hopefully is getting good money for it. LeBron yeah. is probably not really making shit out of it, but he just gets to play a video game for a little bit, which is yeah. dope. But if they're going to classify it as competitive and it's going to take up time from a competitive yeah. scene, it's just like, I yeah. don't know, from a competitive perspective, maybe it's it's a little bit of a slap. I don't find it that way. I think it's kind of cool to, to have mainstream media understand new yeah. form media and try and have these collaborations. I don't know if you're familiar with this. There was a long time back. I want to say it was close to like 2014, 2015. There was a Zenith that one of the Sprouse twins went to. I think I heard about this. Uh, I want to say it was Cole Sprouse. Maybe it was uh, Dylan. I'm not I sure. I heard about this. One of the Sprouse twins went to a Melee tournament. And like they are main, they are popular media. You know them from fucking Disney Channel. Yeah. People know who he is. The fact he went to an event and commentated with D1 for a little bit, to me, that's hype as shit. That's so cool to have that yeah. intertwined, you know, moment there. I was saying more of like a why are soccer players commentating Rocket League? They have no in, idea in what's an, going on. Yeah. And like grand exactly. finals of like a big tournament. Yeah, if they know a bit about no, the game, maybe, and all. it seemed like it seemed like whichever Sprouse it was that was there, he's been a part of Melee a bit. Dylan he's Sprouse at least understood the game. It was Dylan Frog Sprouse. And Dylan yeah, Sprouse had, and Sprouse joined the stream. Yeah, it's like that was that was a really cool moment to to know happened in history here. Soccer pros commentating a a, a game they know literally nothing about, but just have competitive understanding in themselves yeah. for, it for was, soccer. Like I said, it was a mess, and I was, yeah. and it was hyped up, and like I was, I was my brother, older brother, and I both watched a lot of Rocket League. Not Nick, so I have another. You have an older brother? Yes, I do. <laughs> I didn't know you had an older yeah. brother. Okay, but we would watch this, and mm -hmm. and we were so excited, and then we're like, wait a minute, this isn't that good. And then they're mm -hmm. like, they're just spending the whole time. They're not talking about the game. They're just explaining like how boost works, and like, <laughs> yeah. like what it, did you know? What it means when the like they button. leave off the ground, leave the ground, and like have another flip, and like yeah. that's and it's like it was like grand finals. It was like, mm -hmm. yeah, it was it was not it was not it. Definitely missed the mark there. Yeah. Not. Not what you'd want to see. I will need to find that because that just sounds like a. Funny I I looked it up. I couldn't moment. even find the actual like a set. I had to find like an a spring series day two that was streamed and like went to the end of it because I was looking it up and I was oh like, my God. I was I was watching this. It's a that bit. hidden. Yeah, I didn't even. I don't even think they Jeez. cut vods for it on the Rocket League esports channel. I mean, I I don't blame them necessarily. Yeah. From also, how you've described this is a it. this is a cool. I this is I want to kind of I should have mentioned this earlier. So this is a nice little thing. Leafex, the the guy who's on Leafex. here who's like a host for Rocket League. He does a lot with them. He's actually a melee okay. head. Really, he was a Canadian to to TO, and like did and his name is Leafex. Leafex. I don't know if that's what it was like a while ago. 
He would like go to stuff. Because I know Canada. there's Weon no, X. No, just different from Canada. Different guy. Okay. Yeah, but he actually. The reason I like I like made a, I had made some sort of tweet talking about Rocket League, and melee, mm-hmm. and because there were there was a clip there was I've seen two different things there was one someone at like a LAN you saw they had like melee set up on their computer and they said that they were like mm-hmm. warming up with that I think it was mm-hmm. not Gary G I forget his name I forget his name he was on Evil Geniuses. When they mm-hmm. had, were in Rocket League, but there was that, and then when they had the Ro- they had a Rocket League summit, and Beyond the Summit got involved mm-hmm. with Rocket League, which was interesting. Um, there was a melee setup, and I mean, someone's always got a melee setup, okay. and they were playing melee. So I was like, "Oh, there's enough. There's some like trust between." And we were talking, and we ended up like talking on a post or something I made, and he's like, "Yeah, I used to be in yeah. Canada," and he actually, and he knows like friends with Raynex who I've met at like. A Fuck buffalo. Yeah. So it was like so cool, but like he to me is like a legit caster commentator, like doing all this, like mm-hmm. RLCS host for Rocket League for NA is like a very big thing. And he's like got his that's roots in sick. melee. I love it. No, that's awesome. Yeah. I always find it so cool to find people that like can tie in other communities within their own. That's another big reason that I love that we're even doing the show is where we can talk about different communities, different topics yeah. of games and just kind of like have different insights. Um, and I, I love that, especially within uh, bigger names and when you have a, a bigger title behind you. So yeah. that's, that's really sick. Um, shit. I think that that kind of wraps up a lot of what we had lined up for, for commentary yeah. here. Was there anything else that you wanted to address right offhand or was there anything else you had lined up? I don't think so. I I just, I mean, I, I, especially so over COVID, COVID, I've started to love commentary. Agreed. There's just, there's a whole different lens you get to kind of see the game in Mm -hmm. and kind of look through it and also trying to educate, trying to hype, trying to do your own thing. And it's, in a lot of ways, it's similar to like a play style. You like develop Mm -hmm. it over time. You learn from others. You try things out. Mm -hmm. and you find all these things there's a lot and there's not there's not that much content around commentary and a lot Mm -hmm. of it is because a lot of it comes from your personality like i'm a i'm a louder sort of like fun like fun having that's not a real way to describe things (laughs) you're enthusiastic i'm very enthusiastic and like that needs to come across you said, but mm-hmm. there's people that are more soft spoken. So like if I I'm not going to do this, I don't have any merit to, but if I were to make a guide on like what you need to do to become a better commentator, if I tell you mm-hmm. that you need to like do this and use more inflection like this, but that's not who you are, it's gonna come off as like fake. So being able right. people to like find and that's why you see like Scar. Like Scar you no know, offense, Scar doesn't really know what's going on at the top level of melee anymore. No. Which is fine, there's, but he, there's times, and and again, that's where it almost ties back into like the humor and like the yeah, energy. Yeah, but there's other it. ways you're gonna play, and you play to your strengths. But he's done it for so long, he knows where those strengths are. He's not gonna sit there, and he might ask Toph and go, "Hey, this is what I think about this situation. Is that what it's like, or have things changed so much?" Right, and that's like, and that's, and I mean, that's understanding. Hey, this is where things are at now. It's different. But right, it, and, so much and I think that's what it. makes it better. Yeah, yeah, that's what makes it better at the end of the day too. Um, one little thing I just also wanted to point out that I think you just brought up being commentary and content along that. Big shout out to Ryobeat for one thing that he did. I don't know if you noticed that there was a time that I saw him streaming doing analysis the of the commentary of the commentary for like Peach players, right? I think it might have just been general commentary, okay. but also I think it did have a lot to do with how people commentated uh, Peach. Peach. I think so. It, it very well might have I been, but I thought that. it was a great stream that he did, yeah. and and I think that type of stuff could also be much more beneficial and, than douchebag seventy seven on Twitter telling you how bad you did because X Y and Z or, clause or ten k followers. Not <laughs> always douchebag seventy seven. True, true. Yeah. 10K follower, fucking Andy. top level dick. <laughs> uh. Yeah, true. All right. Well, I think that that just about wraps up everything here. Yeah. You, you want to close this out? You want me to close this out? How you, what you I mean? opened it this time. 
That is true. That is true. Well, then I do want to thank you guys again so much for tuning into the Baker's Dozen episode two. We will be back again next week with much more great content coming up. Follow us at the socials. I fucked it up this time. It's down. I'm not even gonna point. I'm gonna mess it up. (laughs) Great. So I get to be the one that messed up. But thank you guys again for coming by. We will see you in the next one. Peace Peace out. out.